in Japan at the very end where he was helping to clean up there. But <clears throat> here's an example of what that generation was all about. When dad came back from war, he wanted to get his postgraduate degree. But in Texas, they had Jim Crow laws and they weren't able to do that. No one accepted them. They could not go to college to get a postgraduate degree in Texas. And actually, I read across the box of letters after he passed away. All these letters, I would say probably 100 or so letters, rejection letters from other colleges he had actually written to, many of them in the Northeast, and they all rejected him. Now, I knew what it was because it was all about his color at that time. But here's, here's the thing that, about that generation. They looked at these kind of obstacles and rejection as motivation. They were not going to stop. They were not going to give in. He continued to, to try until he got to Ohio State. So he ended up going to Ohio State in 1949-50, got his PhD there. His older brother got his PhD in, in agronomy, and he went on to become a 40 years of, of um, a college professor. We lived in Liberia, Africa when I was five years old. He was doing research there. He was an entrepreneur. He was a mentor. Uh, his brother is pretty much the same. His brother got his PhD in, in, in economics, ended up teaching at the University of Houston, was, a, was an entrepreneur. <clears throat> It was, a, it was a generation that really makes you proud because they never whined about where they were. They never complained. They figured out, we're going to stand strong. Let me tell you how they taught young men to look at our country and, and respect others. Very simple. Love God, country, family, respect women and authority. And we had a dad, if we got off track, he knew exactly how to make sure we learned those lessons to stay, stay true. Love God, country, family, respect for women authority. So I tell young men every chance I get, if you want to be happy in life, that's the way to do it. I tell young ladies, if you want to be happy in life, find guys who love God, family, country, respect for women authority, and you got it made. <laughs> so it's really basic, but that's old school, 1960s upbringing in a segregated community that loved our country, and mom and dad who just meant <clears throat> they would they did everything they could to make sure that we grew up confident and giving back to our community. That's what their, their goal was. So we thank you so much for our opportunity to, to, to share that. How okay. about one last question? One last question? From somebody? And then we can have the one-on-one -on -one time. Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll ask one. Okay. okay, here and then, and then here. Okay, go ahead, Mark. The, uh, I'm, I'm originally from Ohio. And in Ohio, I served on the uh, Engineering Industry Advisory Board to Kent State University, and also uh, worked with the board of the Ohio State University. And in both instances, um, I discovered that uh, espionage was uh, major uh, in uh, throughout the universities, and in particular, all those two universities in Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the espionage was, was to such a degree that, um, that I had a conversation with the, with the FBI on um, much of the activity. And uh, since you are going to focus on the uh, educational um, gain, um, my question is, are you aware that espionage is is uh, is, is it's happening. happening, and and if you are, uh, yes, put it on your plate. Absolutely. Um, with justice, the, right? <coughs> with judiciary. Judiciary, exactly. Both of them. And uh, that's actually uh, we hear about the Confucius Institute. Mm -hmm. That's how the communists have come into our country. And we unfortunately have American problems as Americans who care more about their profitability than care about America. And that's the problem we have with is elitism. By the way, elitism is worse than any racism you're gonna find because they can care less about anybody other than their, 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 their class. If you, want to, if you want to know, I'm gonna ask that question because that's a very good one. If you want to know that great community, community that I talked about, why it was turned upside down was such a miserable place for so many black Americans today, it was because it wasn't because of white racism, it was because of black elitists. Elitists could care less about anyone that's not part of their class. I don't care what color they are. They care more about their power than they care about our country. So what we have right now are people in these, in these, these institutions, elitists, who don't mind bringing communists into our country, giving them access to our, in our, in our intelligence, our, in our um, technology, <clears throat> uh, our kids. And they define actually what's being taught about China in these, in these institutions. Well, Trump was getting rid of them, by the way. 
Biden now has given them cover, but we're going to be able to do some things to call defunding once we get there to identify these folks. I'm telling you, there's a new sheriff in town, my friends. We have had two years in which we've seen misery on purpose. We have we have represented representation that's coming on board. That's added to what we have now. They're so sick and tired of seeing it. We want to see fairness. We want to see accountability. We want to see people who have done us wrong be accountable for that. And I think it's going to be very good for our country's faith and our institutions to finally see people who are who, who just do not care be brought in front of us uh, to testify, to be subpoenaed, that we can drive the agenda of what's going to be talked about, which right now we can't. We're going to be in position to, to pass bills that we want to pass, which right now we can't. And if we don't have the the wherewithal within the, the FBI and the CIA, which we, we still have concerns about that, then we'll set the stage that the next time we get a president, then we'll make sure that all this is taken care of. We're on our way back. That's a, my message. We're on our way back. We have to remember that. Uh, <clears throat> Rob, there was, there was the other, did I answer, did I answer that? Was there, was there another question that? You, you, you did, yes. Okay. So yes, we, we are gonna be on top of that. Look, look to see, um, uh, we, we, and we've already started the process. We don't hear about it because, again, when the Democrats control the gavel, they control what, what goes out. But we're going to be on top of that big time. And I, and I appreciate you being a voice because Americans need to speak up. When we're being in an attack, we just can't go into our little shell, live our lives, and think everything will be okay. Our kids will be impacted by what, whether we stay sound or we fight for it or not. Okay? Protect foreign yes. and domestic. We have right here. Yes, right? yes. That's, that's exactly what we should be doing. So we're looking forward to the momentum that's coming with the election. So my concern is the election fraud. We can have great guys like yourself, but if we have election fraud, we're not going to accomplish it. What a good question. So what are we going to do okay. to secure our election? I have the answer for you. Okay. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> I was one of those guys that was really disappointed when the Supreme Court didn't pick up looking at this and seeing whether there was cheating going on. Later on, I realized this. Our country, built on the Christian values, built on a constitution that was forward thinking to become a more perfect union, has already in place exactly how we handle election fraud. Understand this <clears throat> election fraud has been going on for a long time. I, I came out of Philadelphia. Uh, Pennsylvania, by the way, Philadelphia, they cheat, they have no shame, they'll say, I'm cheating, <laughs> <laughs> and what are you going to do about it? They've been doing that for years, I lived there for 23 years, they cheat every single cycle. They do the same thing in Pittsburgh, that's why Pennsylvania stays, a, even though you have all these great people, conservative, former, rural, those two cities control the entire state. By the way, that state of Pennsylvania has more former Politicians have gone to jail in the United States Union. 32. New York, the closest, New York is 23. So no, they cheat. <laughs> Here's the deal. They've been getting away with it because they cheat in little areas. They never had to cheat across the country. We had in 2020 an opportunity for an entire country to see when they collaborated, they did the same things. That, and we look back and say, wait, what in the world's happening here? So what does the Constitution tell us? It tells us that this process should be handled by we the people and legislative bodies. So across this country, whether it be in, uh, in Georgia, Arizona, where they're now putting together voter ID laws that the left says is racist because they believe blacks should not, cannot think like other people think and, and write out, get an ID. <laughs> That's what they think of us. And, um, but at the end of the day, it didn't matter what they called. They called it. We now have voter ID across the country. And, it, and the most important thing is we have an American people is awake. We are engaged. We're asking these questions. We're not going to sit at home now. We're going to go out and make sure that our rights are being protected. We, we, I tell you, one thing, American people, we don't like to be cheated. Uh, we, we have we have limit laws. We don't like to be the, the switch and bait. bait. Bait and switch. We don't like that either. What are we seeing in, what are we seeing in, I mean, in the house right now? Bait and switch. <laughs> <laughs> Big time. And it gets us upset when we realize we've been used like that. Cross the board, Democrat, Independent, and Republicans. So I'll just say this. We'll be better prepared for this election than we ever have been because we're not going to sit back at home anymore. We're going to become engaged. And they can't cheat when the light's on. They only cheat when in the shadows, in the dark, when we're sleeping. 
and we're no longer slaves anymore. So I'm really coming back to the per in person ballot, not this voter. <coughs> you should know that if you request to not receive your ballot so you can go in person, like that needs mm -hmm. to be more publicized. Well, you don't even nature. need to request it. You can just show up at Spanish Fork Fairgrounds and say, I would like to vote in person, and they will print out your ballot right there. And you can sign it and do what you want, and then put it in with those election judges at there. Right? Can I say this you know, before? You know. Think about this, yeah. guys. I want you guys, I just want you to remember this. Think about where our conversation, the questions you guys are asking right now. And would we have answered, asked these same questions, whether it be ESG, C, CRT, or the or, or ballot, ballot, uh, voting integrity, we, we talked about this three or four or five years ago. We wouldn't have done. It would have been different topics. Many people wouldn't even be here because life has been going okay. This is our time to, to broaden the base, to attract people that have never come to us before, and we can we can nail the coffin into hard left Marxism because now we know what it looks like. We didn't want no part of it. Yeah. So. so thank you, Burgess. We appreciate you, you being so here. We appreciate all of you being here as well. And we look forward to Saturday for all of us to be there on Saturday. Those of you who are delegates, for sure, be there early. Make sure you have a chance. There's stop, what? Stop by our booth. Yes, stop we, by the booth we, we have for a, sure. We have a book called Why I Stand. Yes. Okay. Yeah, not this book. Yeah, not the other one. Yes. Why I Stand will be there for all those show up. So Come on by the booth and say hello. And All get right. that. And those of you who aren't delegates and you want to just have a good time, you're welcome to join us because it is open to the public to come and, and listen. Um, again, if you would like the recordings of, of the state candidates that we have, have had here in Woodland Hills, I put that uh, sign up on the back table and you can sign up there. Those of you who would like signs, um, Jared has some signs outside that you're able to, to get. And then those of you who have additional questions or you want a picture with the ring, <laughs> which is always kind of cool, uh, come up and, and talk to her just afterwards. And again, we appreciate you being here.